ATB Film Study, sponsored by the 409 Tailgate Club. If you're looking for some great holiday gifts for the Penn State or in your life, visit 409tailgateclub.com today. Starting corner out against probably one of the most prolific passing offenses in the Big Ten. What is Penn State going to do? Let me tell you, Manny Diaz dials it up. Defensive front seven was unstoppable. Joey Porter wasn't really missed because there was so much pressure in the backfield. Let's talk about true freshman Abdul Carter. Let's talk about the game. Let's talk about how, man, if you love defense, you love this game. All right, you know the drill. Comment, like, subscribe. Can't wait to do it. Let's do this. Manny Diaz's defense was on point. I really liked how the pressures came together, and I really like how you know, the defensive line got off of blocks better than they have all year. So what I'm going to start with, I'm going to start early. I want to show you a couple of things that really set the pace for this game. It's second down, first drive of the game. And I want you to see something. I want you to look at how well the front seven play the run. So first of all, this is a counter. This is old school GT counter, guard tackle counter. And I want you to watch how they play this. The defensive end comes up the field, okay? Now, a lot of times people will talk about how this is not a good thing. But I really like what this happens here. I like how he gets up the field, but I really like how the linebackers fit over the top of this. They see this. The D-line doesn't get pushed in a double team. 51 doesn't allow the linebackers to get touched by the tackle and the guard. And I like how 11, the freshman, the true freshman, Abdul Carter, steps into the lane and the middle linebacker steps over the top. And you've got two for one. When they run counter, these two guys are responsible for this guy to this guy. He's responsible for this guy. The guard is going to kick the defensive end. The tackle is going to wrap around. He's got that middle linebacker. But the problem is because the defensive line really stepped up, this linebacker never got blocked, and there's your extra run fitter, and now he makes a play. This was a really big deal because they really struggled with this up to this point. Now, because of this, this allowed for the pass rush to become even more volatile and explosive. So here we go. Because you have a second down stop on counter, two yard gain, it's third and eight. Third and eight and third and long is a playground for defensive coordinators, especially guys like Manny Diaz. Now I want you to watch how this happens. He runs his normal stunts like he always does, but I want you to watch. You have one, two, three, four, five. You have a running back who checks late. So basically what you have here is you have a five-man pressure against a five-man blocking protection. Now, the big thing is that means that you have to win these one-on-ones. I want you to watch how these D linemen and linebackers get through this thing and they make plays. Number one, watch the defensive end. He takes outside knowing that you're going to get a looper outside and he takes this thing inside Beats the inside shoulder of that O-lineman, and Abdul Carter comes around the edge, and he comes and makes a play, which forces this thing to come back up, and now the D-lineman makes a play. It's all a dance, guys. Defensive line stunts and blitzes are a dance, and it's about knowing who goes where, when they go. What I found impressive was they really fixed a couple things that we struggled with against Ohio State. Notice how they get up the field, up the field, and then they get late on these loops. OK, look at the timing of the loop around and the loop around. That is excellent. You can tell they spent a lot of time on this. They knew that, that Maryland was going to throw the ball. OK, let's talk about this one. Now you're going to get trips with a motion. Now, first and 10, it's a passing offense. Let's talk about how this works. They're going to bump themselves over. Abdul Carter is going to go over here one on one at the tight end which is okay because we like this matchup. We like this matchup. We like this matchup. We like this one. Again, now you have a four-man pressure on a six-man protection. But I want you to watch how the defensive end comes up the field and gets a one-hand bull rush. Watch this. He runs. He look, puts his inside hand in the chest of 71, and he goes for a ride. I like this. This is also why I don't like running backs blocking and chipping because they end up getting lost. This little dude right here ain't blocking a D lineman. He ends up tripping the lineman. You get a one hand bull rush by the DN and you collapse the pocket. Even if we didn't get the pressure here, 44 beats this guy back inside. D line gets pressure in the middle and you've got to play. This, I mean, guys, when you as a quarterback feel pressure, you'll start noticing. I believe in Monday Night Football once somebody said, I'm seeing ghosts. It means there may not be pressure, but because you got pressure early, 
this is what's happening. All right, so again, we're going to go in motion. They're going to see man-to-man. -man. You can obviously tell that Bill Carter had the tight end one-on-one. -on -one. Now watch the pressure. Second and 17. Again, a playground for a defensive coordinator. They run a play-action guard-pull protection. Let me tell you something. Terrible, terrible idea. I want you to watch how the linebacker pushes himself through. All right, he drives over the top. Notice they play run. They do a really good job of playing run. You're in man-to-man -man because, again, I have four-star athletes. I better be able to do this. I want you to watch how the quarterback cannot step into this throw. Watch how he falls off the back end. Look at this, guys. This ain't it. That's going to get you in trouble. He floats the ball in the middle of the field. Okay, floats the ball in the field, and he's lucky he doesn't get picked off. It all goes back to a couple of things we talked about previously. He's getting pressure. He's seeing ghosts. Okay, next play. You know they're going to throw the ball. It's third and 17. Look at this. It looks like, man, all of a sudden you get late drops. Uh-oh, now we have zone coverage. Let's talk about the front seven. Oh, here it comes. They don't have a chance. Look at the looping and stunting happening right here. Watch this defense. You're going to get a pressure. He's going to hold. Notice how he holds. Notice how this, the defensive tackle gets inside. The looper comes around. It's just beating one-on-ones. You get pressure. You get pressure. You sit the pocket inside. He's seeing ghosts. He has no chance. And by the way, as much as I love fat dudes, that is illegal. You can't do that. That's an illegal pass. But look how they just break the pocket down with movement and stunting. This is what they didn't do against Ohio State, what they didn't do against Michigan. And I'm really proud, and I love to see what they're doing. Okay, into the first quarter, first and ten. Obviously, we're having an issue throwing the ball here. Okay, here we go. They bring the pressure off the edge. Here it comes. Pressure off the edge. Running back, you get an easy motion real quick. Running back throws this thing off. This was a design screen. This is because the coordinator realized that the quarterback's seen ghosts. They can't block these guys. And because they can't block these guys, they got to find a way to get rid of the ball as quickly as humanly possible. Again, when this happens, now you've set yourself up success as a defense. They can now just rally themselves to the play. And all of a sudden, you're asking receivers to have to block linebackers. And now you get free runners. Guys, this is a recipe for disaster. As an offensive coordinator, you look at yourself and say, uh, crap, what do I call next? I got to get my kid on rhythm. Okay, second quarter. Obviously, there's no rhythm here. It's second down and 14. You get a squeeze, compressed look, double tight. We call this a double squeeze look. They're trying to create blockers. They're trying to create chippers. They're trying to allow this to happen. Safety steps up. Here's the penetration. Again, Abdul Carter comes free. This is obviously a blown protection, okay? Because, again, they see this guy on the line. They see this guy on the line. So they're going to fan out, fan out, okay? All of a sudden, uh-oh, this guy drops. We wasted a guy. He tries to go back inside. Abdul Carter has a free run. He makes and makes the trip. Boom. All right. Let me explain this to you that there is no worse feeling as an offensive coordinator knowing that you can't protect even the most basic concepts. Okay. Here we go. Now we're in the third. It is a butt whooping. Now, let me tell you something. There's nothing more entertaining than watching this. Watch the flow. Watch the play action. I want you to see how this kid's seeing ghosts, guys. He tries to throw this ball. He's got this. Okay, but he's seeing ghosts. We're getting guys dropping. We got guys rolling underneath. You're getting to bulldoze. This is an RPO, right? He should have handed this ball off, guys. This is 100% a hand because this kid sits in the window. He is freaked out. I want to show you something. He's reading a backside slant concept. He's reading this. His read is this safety. If that safety steps up into the run, he throws the banger behind it. Here's what happens. That guy sits, he can't make the throw, quarterback's struggling, he's six for 14 in the third quarter, and he takes a sack. Guys, I'm telling you, man, I loved watching Manny Diaz's stunts and pressures. This was awesome to watch.